everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Let's Talk the Postgrad podcast with Whitney and Tess. Yeah. So yeah, this week we have we have Jade on the podcast and she is not a postgrad yet. She's looking into postgrad life. So we thought it could be good for some listeners who are kind of using us as a tool for that. And she was extremely realistic with us. Um, so candid. Yeah, just really kind of set up a, a good, just, I think really broadcasted what it's like to be a student searching for what her postgrad should be like and what she expects out of it. And she taught Whitney and I a lot and I hope she helps you guys and gives you some insight. <laughs> yeah, so we hope you really enjoy it. As always, please remember to like, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please, please, please rate us five stars. That really helps us out. Um, and if you have any questions or topics you want to see on the show, email us at tessandwhitney at gmail.com. And we hope you have so much fun and really get something good from Jade in this interview. So thank you. All right. Jade. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. What are you drinking? Right now I'm drinking a little pink wine to calm Ooh. the nerves. Yeah. I love pink wine. Is it wine. pink? It doesn't look pink. <laughs> I mean, it's a blue cup. Oh, I was seeing the same so thing. It looks a little brownish, dark. So like, deceiving. Like, is the dress gold or blue? <laughs> Yeah, is it gold and white or black and blue? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jade, I'm so happy that we were able to interview you because I feel like you offer such an interesting perspective that, you know, we don't have as postgrads anymore because I feel like you are that, like, you are graduating into a pandemic also like us, which I don't know, maybe that's, but you're also, like, you try to have the best attitude you can about it. And I want the listeners to hear your perspective because I think it's really interesting right now. And so can you just tell us like what you're doing right now and how close you are to graduation? Like where are you at right now? Yeah, so um, I graduate in four and a half weeks today, which is honestly terrifying. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm graduating a semester early. Good and for you. I think I honestly, when the pandemic started, I was debating on like taking some extra credits just like for shits and gigs and like my own entertainment to try to yeah. wait out the pandemic. But then once I realized that it's not going to stop anytime soon, I was just like, okay, we got to get out of here. So yeah, four and a half weeks, wow. I'll, be done. I'll be done with Zoom University and I cannot yeah. wait. What are those feelings? Yeah, like I'm just so curious because I know how we felt, but like you had so much more time with it. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I did a good job throughout this semester, like having like engaging conversations over Zoom. But now that I'm like almost done, I'm really like having a hard time like caring about the little things that we like talk about in class or like things with the student farm that we're like planning for next semester that I won't be involved in I'm just like yeah. someone else yeah like people send me emails about like future things for the student farm and I'm like hey can someone like respond to this and like make a connection and then like no one does a thing and I'm like okay I'll just schedule it and you guys just have to be free for that day <laughs> like, <laughs> God, it's all over the place so I feel like once I graduate I can have like a clean slate of just like okay, now I, I know that this isn't my responsibility anymore and other people also know it's not my responsibility anymore. So. Right. I can't imagine like four and a half weeks away and you've been doing Zoom this entire semester and spring yeah. semester from last year. Like, yeah, I, I don't know how you're doing it. And I can't imagine like the generate, like the genuine fatigue from Zoom oh, that you're experiencing. It's real. The fatigue is real. I'm honestly surprised I lasted this long. Like <laughs> I've I've watched people around me drop like flies. Like, yeah. I can't do it anymore. I'm done. I quit. But I'm honestly like kind of impressed that I've lasted this long, like just honestly like surviving <laughs> during yeah. all of this. No, so. that that is what it feels like, I bet, because you're just yeah. like I'm almost there at the finish line. <laughs> Exactly. I can like see the end. Like I have graduation plans and I not like career plans, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> but I like, I like know what graduation is going to look like. And I'm like, come on, I'm almost there. 
let's go. Yeah. Yes. No, that makes sense. Do you want to talk about what you're studying and what and how that's been for you and yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'll like go into like where that came from and then also like what I'm studying. So um, my major is agribusiness management with a minor in sustainable food systems, yada, yada, all that Ooh. drama. Um, Ag Saturday. Yes, Ag Saturday. <laughs> Very similar to you guys. Um, and I think this major wasn't necessarily my intention going into college. My intention was more like environmental resource management. But then once I started, I was like, okay, this is very science-based. That's not really for me. So I had to kind of divert my path. Um, but yeah, I chose um, a career, not a career, a major in ag because my high school environmental science teacher went to Penn State in a major in ag and I like wanted to be her so bad. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to Penn State. I'm an ag student. I'm going to take all the same classes as her. <laughs> so, I mean, I kind of followed in her footsteps. I tried to like look her up today to like <laughs> to see like exactly like what her major was but she I don't think she works at my high school anymore there's no evidence of her existing at all so I can't even like reach <laughs> her and be like hi I love you and like I'm graduating now because of you so I can't even like find her anywhere but <laughs> oh my gosh what happened to her oh it all to Kristen real dean <laughs> wow yeah. that's I feel like that's so interesting though I feel like a lot of people that come from backgrounds that aren't agriculture backgrounds to have a story similar to yours, Jane. Yeah, I definitely didn't grow up in an ag setting at all. I mean, I, there were like farms around my mm -hmm. house, but there was no like farm community. Like I feel like in Center County, there's a lot of like consumer to farmer relations and like there's more of like an awareness about agriculture but at home I was like wait there like people live near farms and then I came home and I was like I live near a farm <laughs> like, a farm down the street and I never like noticed it mm -hmm. it's just something that didn't we didn't like grow up with that environment like the community of agriculture surrounding us yeah Very how nice. do you feel now going into postgrad and like having that knowledge and where do you want that to take you because I feel like you've really like developed this huge love for food systems yeah. and you're almost done so like what's next yeah I honestly like not to like boost boost you guys but like it truly I didn't have this passion for this food system or anything related to my major like I kind of didn't like my major until I like met you guys and I was like oh my god like these people like care about what they study and like there's actual meaning behind it and I don't know it's just like really good to know that I'm like I'm in the right spot um but I guess like my goal for after graduation is to work I've always said like I want to work for a large food company and like make it more sustainable but now I don't yeah. think I want to tackle that corporate like environment mm -hmm. I don't think that's yeah thing. I think I would like kind of lose my morals and it's a long ladder to um, climb it's, <laughs> yeah exactly like I would start really small and like feel so defeated and be like why am I even here yeah um, yeah which like, I Whitney, you were saying in the last podcast that's kind of how you're feeling both of you guys yeah I mean I'm currently I think I work for I mean I work for a government organization so I think a lot of government work is like that but you know, I also work with a girl who works, I don't work, I, I'm friends with a girl here that works for a corporate organization, and she's, like, been trying to get in their sustainability program for the last three years, and she's just about to quit because she's, like, it's not working, and I'm wasting my time, and I thought that I could climb the ladder, and I'm not climbing the ladder, and I'm, like, also not doing great, and Tess, I don't know if you want to talk about that at all, but I yeah. feel like I really, you want to start where you want to start, Jade, and I feel like I just jumped into a job because, I was like, I need financial stability. And now I'm like, fuck. Yeah. No, it's I definitely fear that. It, and I mean, the thing is too, is like, I, I'm working for a small, small company and I am still seeing that struggle 
-hmm. So I just, I don't know, like even what to say to that, because I'm like, we have to earn our way. Yes. But at the same time, like, can I have some credit for the work I've done? Because I just feel like our generation is really working hard and it's not being as acknowledged as much as I think it should be because people are like, well, you guys have Instagram and YouTube and all these platforms. And it's like, that's not making a difference. (laughs) Like, I don't, yeah. So it's, it's definitely hard no matter where you end up. I feel like everyone's kind of facing it and Mm -hmm. Corona is not making it easier. So yeah, that's the other thing. Like, I feel like I don't want to set like crazy goals for myself and then let myself down because of like environmental factors that I can't really control. Um, so like realistically, I would like want to graduate and immediately like start a job like that's kind of the goal I want to be able to like make my own money and be independent and like not rely on my parents anymore like they've supported Mm -hmm. me throughout my entire college career and like I do have like guilt about that Mm -hmm. I know like I I shouldn't necessarily have guilt about that like they saved up since the day I was born for this purpose and they like never wanted me to worry about money but I still like want that independence financially so I would hope to immediately like get a job but at the same time I'm realizing that this whole like virtual world and this pandemic has made my effort and like attention span just such crap so I don't want to start a job and like not be a good employee necessarily like it's I don't want to like sign myself up and be like oh my god I can't wait to start and then just feel like I'm in the same slump yeah I really relate to that as of my job right now and I don't know if it's because of what I'm doing on a daily basis or because I'm also still working 100% remote and it's like that zoom fatigue is still there and yeah I don't know no I was just gonna say the same thing like I I feel for you Jade but at the same time the grass isn't much greener like I (laughs) Like I, like, I hate to say that, but, like, most people that have jobs that I am aware of are still doing things virtual. Like, I have maybe stepped foot in my office. Like, it's bringing tears to my eyes. Look, like, ten, probably less than 10 times. And I've been working for almost, what, six or seven months? Yeah. So, I know. It's not realistic for me to expect to have an in-person job. Like, that's that's not really what I'm saying. I'm just like, oh, but it is realistic for you to have expectations that you want to work hard and you want yeah. to have meaningful yeah. work and you want to feel like you're valued. And that's, that's a hundred percent. Okay. And I think that you should feel that way, especially with how hard you as a person have worked throughout your time at college and at Penn yeah. State. But yeah. And I want to be able, I also want to be able to like step into a job that I like have some comfort level in because if I step into a job that I'm like, I don't necessarily like know exactly what I'm doing and it's all remote and I feel like a disconnect with either like my boss or my coworkers and I feel like I can't really like have that support system in the workplace and also just like the comfortability to like ask a question that I might think is stupid. Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling really picky right now and I hate that about myself, but at the same time, I. I want to avoid any like discomfort or like unhappiness in this tough time. (laughs) (laughs) No, Jade, I think that's really good. And and like I said, like a minute ago, I feel like sometimes I wonder if I should have waited for a job that felt better. And I think that there is nothing wrong with wanting to like actually feel like your skills are being used and actually feel comfortable where you are, especially because of the amount of like fatigue and work that you had to put into the last, I mean, all four years of college, but like also right. the last, actually the last year home stretch. Yeah. So I think that's like, I think that's an interesting perspective. And hopefully with your work in food systems too, you'll be able to like get outdoors a little bit and like be in that space if you want to. But I definitely don't think that you feel you need to feel like you need to compromise what yeah. you want especially while you're like still in school and still looking I can understand like stress like I wish I just waited maybe another month and then if it had to be happen like if I needed to take something I didn't love I would have but like right yeah I mean there are some some jobs 
like putting feelers out for some jobs but on the other end of the spectrum COVID is hindering like those companies abilities to even like fund a new person Hmm. like I there's this job that um an alumni who was went to Penn State and knows a little bit about the student farm she reached out to me and wants me to work with her through Aramark in the Nike headquarters and like manage food systems and maybe start an on-campus farm which is the dream like that's the dream job if I could start tomorrow I'd be like bye everyone like see ya I'm starting a new job it's the dream um but they're having like so many troubles funding this new position so I'm like I really really want that and is it stupid of me to like wait it out almost because I I could potentially hear back in like two weeks if the job is posted Mm -hmm. so like do I just wait it out or do I like apply for a bunch of jobs that I'm gonna hate I both advice (laughs) help me (laughs) literally literally both I mean you what is it what what was the thing we heard the other day Whitney you don't want to count your chicks before the eggs hatch well we sure counted our 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 chickens before they hatched something like that I you want to just make sure that I feel like all your bases are covered and that you have that. I mean, I don't know, Whitney, what do you, what were you going to say? I feel like it's this fine balance because I know that personally I applied for a lot of jobs in college still, and it was really defeating to, because it takes time. Like it takes so much time to put yourself out there, to refine a resume, to refine a cover letter and to find a job that you feel good about to look up the hiring manager's name, to send an email, like it takes like hours to do like an actually really thoughtful application. And so I feel like I would do a fine balance of like wait it out, but also be, and but you can still be picky. And for any job that you think maybe I would be happy here, right. maybe this would be a good fit, like 1 million percent still apply for it. Right. But don't feel like you need to like apply for everything. Yeah, I also can't really know what it's going to be like until I like speak to someone and like have an interview, maybe like get some more information about the job too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like stressing a little bit, but I, I also like need to be easy on myself Mm -hmm. and not like think I'm like failing because I, it's not really my priority right now. My priority is just to like be okay up here. (laughs) No, that's good that you're clear with yourself and you know what you need for yourself right now. I mean, it's, there's a lot, especially you coming up on graduating. It's like, you see a lot in your rear view mirror, but you're also like driving towards the unknown and it's a lot to be thinking about. And I don't know, especially knowing who you are, I think you want to make sure that you're making the right choices. And that's why you're such a good one because you want to be thoughtful, but it also makes it so hard when you're trying to be thoughtful in a time where things are so uncertain yeah so that was one of the questions we wanted to ask you like what is your hot take right now going into post-grad life like do you have two words well yeah. we have more questions but I'm curious like yeah give us Jade's hot take on post-grad life and if you have two words let me know yeah so I do I, I planned ahead um <laughs> so I my two words would be like uncertainty and patience Ooh, that's a good one uncertainty like I honestly have no idea where I'll be in a month or like even in I don't know I have no idea where I'll be in the future at all yeah I can't predict anything Mm -hmm. um but the patience thing is like I need to be patient with myself and also with the surrounding factors that I don't have control over because like it's not like I can like turn off COVID and like all my plans just fall into place like that Mm -hmm. so I need to be like realistic with what is like a functional dynamic for my future but also like kind of accept the uncertainty and just like put feelers out everywhere and then accept what comes to me yeah 
Wow, you have such an interesting perspective on it. And it's totally different than mine. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and like hearing your thoughts, because Tess also like Tess had a job lined up when she when we were graduating, and I had kind of gotten there. And I feel like I really appreciate that you're like giving that reminder to yourself to be patient with yourself and like know what your priorities are. Know that your mental well-being is like yeah. just as much of a priority because if you can't show up for that and you get a job, then like right, then I will be the worst. Yeah. And what's happening. And yeah. so I feel like you have this really awesome, like grounded idea of what you need for yourself. And that is something that like I have not been able to get to. So I mm -hmm. think that's awesome. Yeah, I feel and like the difference between like your guys's graduation process and mine is that you guys started the job search process when things still looked like they would be normal mm -hmm. so you're like ready to go like I need to get a job I'm going to graduate soon but for me I number one was like am I even going to graduate in December like should I even be thinking about this yet and then the other thing is like my whole graduation process is in a time where I'm like am I even going to get a job is anyone even hiring like it just feels very defeating because I don't have the motivation to like make that step to just yeah. like yeah make the next career move yeah I mean everyone always says like don't plan anything with COVID and like you know no sense in making plans even for like December break like for us to see each other yeah. it's like no sense in making plans so I really I think that's like a really solid point it's so hard to plan when like for the last whatever like almost a year now somebody yes. has been telling you don't make plans because they probably right. won't work out so how do you go from like okay don't make plans but make enough of a plan where you feel like you'll be okay but also you might make a plan and it's yeah. that's a really good point Jade yeah and then also uh, there's the other side of me that's like snap out of it and grow a pair and just start applying to places and like toughen it up like you're not the only one like struggling right now yeah and like I don't know if that helps like I know everyone's saying recently that like you know you're not the only one going through it like that's the whole right. thing with corona people are like you're not alone stand together like that's the <laughs> thing that's happening and like I, I think it's important that you do acknowledge that you will not be a jobless Joe Jackson forever like you will figure it out like that's something my boyfriend has taught me he's Wait, like Joe Jackson like Michael's dad I don't, is that Michael's dad? I don't know. <laughs> Joseph Jackson. <laughs> I didn't know that. Does he I'm, know that? I'm, I'm so the biggest Michael Jackson fan. <laughs> wait, wait, let me. I know. I feel like I remember that about you. Oh my God. My nightly read, Moonwalk by Michael Jackson. <laughs> I hate that that was like right next to you. Oh, next to the bed. <laughs> next to my bed. That but you know Christmas what I'm saying? Day. Like jobless Joe Jackson. That's just, I guess, something Chris came up with that I thought was funny. But like, I've <laughs> never heard of it. Turn into that. <laughs> that is funny. But you will. Moral of the story is that yeah. I, I think it's good that you acknowledge that it's hard, but that you are strong enough to figure it out, even yeah. in a pandemic. Yeah, I feel like at this point I'm doing enough of like being humble, and I'm like, okay, let's let's get a little active <laughs> but at the same time I feel I feel like super busy so the moments where I'm like oh I don't have to do anything the last thing I want to do is like go on LinkedIn and like look for jobs no yeah. like I don't want to do that no I don't even, go ahead Tess I was just saying I don't even like to go on LinkedIn anymore like I can't imagine going on there to find a job like yeah, LinkedIn no. honestly raises my blood pressure I'm just like what am I doing that's inadequate because everyone on here is so active oh my god everyone's like just accepted my job at and they're graduating in like May and I'm like am I a, a piece of garbage on the floor like am I a garbage person <laughs> well I also think it's interesting the language people use sometimes and this isn't to hate on people on LinkedIn if you no, if you like Whitney's really good on LinkedIn so I feel like she's feeling attacked right now <laughs> no I'm not it's fine I, I still am searching for jobs though on LinkedIn so yeah but I just feel like some people will will word things and be like I am so excited to announce and it's like who's waiting for that yeah no one, no one was waiting for you to announce that <laughs> uh, 
No, I see like the kids my sister graduated high school with and they're like excited to announce my internship <laughs> at PepsiCo. Can't wait to be. And I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't even get an internship at, at PepsiCo. Like, come on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a rough world, and it's even when you're not in post grad life, you're comparing yourself to exactly. other. Exactly, I'm. I feel like I'm constantly doing that. I have yeah. to get off of LinkedIn whenever I still do because I lost my job in before before Rona. I lost my, I had a job, lost my job during coronavirus, and before then you started. Had, to be fair, it was before you started. Yeah. Okay. Had a job lined up. There it is. Did not. Did not. It fell through. That's the language. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I need to find a job. And I honestly, during that time, like would not go on LinkedIn for like, and scroll through the feed because I would, my blood pressure would raise because it would be all these people. I was like, despite the challenges of (laughs) COVID-19, I am pleased to announce. And I was like, fuck you. Like, I'm still trying to think of this. Like, I would get so upset. I really would. And not like, you know, good for them. Like everybody should be able to celebrate their accomplishments. I'm here for you relish in that celebrate that but I it was so bad for my mental health because I just was like I don't want to congratulate yeah Jane on her new (laughs) internship no it's it's just like one of those things too like with social media like people are only posting the positive stuff like you don't know they're dealing with hard stuff too right yeah so it's just like I don't know you see one side of people and then that makes Mm -hmm. it so hard to not compare and be like why don't I have a job like that? Or why am I not going hiking and doing these fun activities every weekend? Because it's not realistic. (laughs) Right. Everyone's always like, what did you do this weekend? I'm like, "Mm, I sat my fat ass on the couch. What did you do? I went on a hike and I, I painted with my, my boyfriend and I, and I'm like, oh my God, why am I not like doing anything for myself? I know. I'm like, is it legal to have weekends still? (laughs) I know. I'm like, I'm like, oh, just another weekend, like another excuse to be at home. <laughs> like I could totally be doing something fun and I'm not <laughs> because I'm responsible because I'm like, yeah, I don't have to, I, don't, I can just be a homebody at this point. <laughs> Jade, I feel like, what do you feel like you need right now from <laughs> Because clearly when you go on LinkedIn, you don't need the people telling you, I'm so excited. Like, what do you feel like you need right now from people that have already graduated, from your fellow classmates, from your professors, from your community, et cetera? What do you feel like, don't, like, that was a lot. I'm sorry. Basically, my question, just fuck me. My question is, what do you feel like you need right now? Like, what do you feel like you need right now to feel good about you and Uh, the life you're going into? I feel like no one, like, no one owes me shit you know? Yeah. (laughs) Well, okay. (laughs) Okay. To be fair. I, I feel like everyone's like kind of a really supportive person in my life right now. Like, I don't feel like anyone is like rubbing anything in my face. Everyone's like, wow, like I'm so like, good for you. You're graduating in this shithole. And I'm like, yeah, it's hard. Um, but I feel like when the first thing, when you said, what do you feel like you need right now? I need communication from employers. Like the amount of places I've applied to and I'm like, follow up email and I'm like, hey, did you get my application? They're like, yep, we got it. I'll reach out to the HR and I'm like, okay, give me a call, please. And then it's like silence. It goes into the abyss. So I'm like, can someone just call me and can I speak to someone and really prove myself? Because an application can only do so much. I'm just words on a paper. Yeah. And even if it's a no, at least you have. Right. Like, I just answer. need, I need some feedback to make me feel like what I've done already is not just like useless and goes into the abyss. Yeah. Because the places I've applied to are like, if anyone was like, we'll hire you, I'd accept like in the, in the minute. I'd be like, yep, I'm in. Great. Love it. Like sign me up. But I just haven't, I just, I need more communication because I feel like I'm all alone on this side of things. Like, Hey. No, yeah, I, I know a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the people in my life that are going through that are experiencing the same thing where people just aren't answering them. Yeah. Just like a handful of people I know that even my brother was looking for a new job when he was switching, people just weren't getting back to him. Yeah. I'm not sure like what that means or why companies think they can do that and string people along like yeah, it's kind of you, not fair so why are you ghosting people like what is right. this? yeah <laughs> and, and 
a lot of the people I was in contact with is from the career fair that I did at the beginning of the semester. Oh, so God. After, after the that. career fair, I was like, okay, like those conversations went really well. Like I spoke to a lot of people that I was like, I could see myself in their shoes. Mm-hmm. And then how the career fair works is like in that moment, you send them all your contact information. If they're interested, they reach out to you after because it's all virtual and it's like, yeah they kind of just procrastinate all of the process. Wow. So I like got a lot of feedback and like, hey, like I remember you from the career fair, it went really well, like apply here. And I was like, okay. So it's like, why even bother reaching out to me if you're just gonna ghost me? Or if I applied and something didn't look right, like give me feedback. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'd like to know at least what I can like grow on or what I can potentially like do to possibly like build up to eventually be where I applied. I don't know, it just feels like I'm just kind of like guessing. guessing. I'm like, eh, well, I'm winging it. If it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, I'll never know why. <laughs> That's so interesting. I'm wondering like why, cause I feel like it's been this year since Corona that it really yeah. has gotten worse. Like yeah, I did not, I mean, last year I applied to some things and I feel like they told me no or whatever right away. Right. I'm just curious. And there's probably why. like four or five places that they're like, hey, like not saying anything. I'm like, hello, <laughs> remember like, me? I like that TikTok. Hey. The one person who just decided to graduate in December, like, please help me. <laughs> yeah, and you would think because the job market looks different that it. Yeah. Whole- it's not like um like they're not being bombarded with other college students that are like, I can start in May. I'm like, I can start as soon as you want me to. Like before yeah. I even graduate, I can start because everything's virtual. Virtual graduation, I don't even have to be in person for that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jane. Yeah, I feel like I'm just complaining. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're experiencing though. Like I feel well, yeah, like it's like realistic. It's really heavy in your life. There's just so many things that you're just like, I don't know. I don't know. And I feel no, like exactly my not- dad calls me and he's like, any update? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then he's asking me like details about job descriptions that I have like, no, like I, questions that only the hiring manager would know the answer to. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Why are you asking me? I don't know. Stop mm-hmm. asking me those questions. I do not know the answer. Yeah, and it's like it's almost making it worse. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like my dad was also in the job search since January. Like COVID kind of messed up his job search process. So he's kind of he was kind of like reflecting his own like I guess stresses about the job hunt and kind of like, well, if Jade gets a job, then I'll just be like one less thing that mm-hmm. dad has to worry about. So I feel yeah. like he was like projecting a little bit about his own job stresses like onto me, but he got a job today. So oh, <laughs> yeah, so maybe he'll shut up a little bit. Well, yeah. Why don't we switch gears and take a breath <laughs> and, <laughs> and maybe, you know, is there anything that you're excited about or feel like post-grad will have in terms of like refreshing you? Um, in that aspect, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely super excited to like start something new. Mm-hmm. Like I I love Penn State and like what I'm studying and like the people I have around me, but I'm so ready to just like have a new routine mm-hmm. and like maybe a more like stabilized routine because I feel like there are so many like things on a weekly basis in my life right now that are like abnormal that I feel like kind of useless in I don't know if that made any sense but like I don't know I want more like structure in my day-to-day life and stability and I'm excited to potentially like move into my own place I'm so excited to just have my space and just be an independent person Mm. Yeah. yeah No, that's, that's, that's really something. I mean, I feel like I need that too. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Also like I will have my apartment here until August so I can 
have this security blanket, I guess, until like if August hits and I don't have a job, I don't know what I'm going to do. But um, until then I can live here. But then after that, I'd have to move into my mom's two bedroom townhouse, share a room with my sister on bunk beds, and I'm just not interested. <laughs> so um, I'm really excited to have like a space that's mine, no matter where it is. Yeah. Are you one of those people that you like to be alone and that you like talk to yourself when you're alone? Because I'm one of those people. And yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely I really like being alone I mean there are there are days now where I'm just like alone all the time and I'm like yeah I really like this like spend time with myself but then like the moment I hear my roommate come home I'm like hang out with me hang out with me hang out with me like I want attention I just like bother her (laughs) um so I'm kind of curious to see how I'll do like fully independent yeah just like hanging out with yourself all day every day yeah yeah I mean I feel like I feel like I would be okay yeah I don't necessarily like feel sad when I'm alone like it's peaceful to me oh that's good healthy (laughs) yeah so I think I think it'll be good for me to maybe like really just resonate with my own thoughts and just be me myself and I Mm. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I, I watched Katie, our friend. You all know Katie. I watched her move to um, Atlanta, Georgia by herself. And she's a social butterfly. And I feel like she's doing really well. Like she, yeah. loves, she loves her space and her apartment is so cute. And she just like hangs out with her plants and cooks for herself. And I just like want to be like her. <laughs> I want to be Katie when I grow up. I told my mom that and she was like you should want to be you when you grow up oh my god <laughs> like, I was like okay I can be me but I want to be like Katie when I grow up yeah I think that's a really good thing to look forward to just that sense of independence and like having a space that's yours and like not I just feel like living in the apartment that we lived in in college it really was like Tempor- you knew it was temporary it didn't feel totally like yours because it was also like the landlords who kind of sucked right. and it just was like kind of messy like that and you're kind of dealing with roommates and what that looks like which is weird especially in the time of COVID so right and even just like the little things like when the neighbors turn on their music I'm like can't I just like have some peace and quiet to myself in my own space like it doesn't really feel like mine because if I knocked mm-hmm. on the wall my neighbors would knock back yeah it's it's that close knit that makes sense yeah um all right so is there anything that you are nervous about or did we already kind of touch on all of that I feel like I'm nervous about everything but I try (laughs) to um (laughs) I try to pick like one thing a day to be nervous about because I don't (laughs) overwhelm myself um I probably rotate between three things. One of them is how am I going to pack up my entire apartment where most of the furniture and items in the kitchen and my entire room is mine and potentially move it to wherever I need to be by myself. That's number one. Um, (laughs) That's a long (laughs) sentence. The first worry. (laughs) The second worry is will I ever find a job that I like and like feel fulfilled and happy and like a successful woman and prove all of the men that I've dealt with in the past wrong you already have you already have like let me just tell you right now like I just want you to know (laughs) that yes you will accomplish more and I think it's valid to know and like to ask yourself that but you've already accomplished so much in your time that just thank you take that as your first step thank you (laughs) Take a yeah. breath. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, and then my third worry would have to be, will I move somewhere where I can't relate to the people that live there and I have a hard time finding friends and like feel like I can be social again? Mm-hmm. Like, can I recover yeah. from this social blockage I've been living in and find new people and have a good time? Yeah. 
those are definitely, I definitely understand those worries. And I feel like even as a postgrad, I still resonate with them. Mm -hmm. And I just think, I mean, Tess always tells me like, in one month, everything will be different. And I, right now in postgrad, I'm like, in one year, if you're not happy with where you are, like you have the capacity to change it. So even if it doesn't all like, all of the worries don't resolve within the next couple of months, like they will resolve eventually. And you've already proved everyone wrong. So like, here you are. And it was also kind of refreshing to see Allie, who was in the second podcast of yours. Um, It was refreshing to see her like go through a situation where she like was like, I don't belong here and I don't like my job and I don't like the people that are around me. But she like turned it around so quick and she came back to somewhere where she was comfortable and she has an amazing job and she's living with her boyfriend and she has a cute little dog and she's thriving. And I'm like, okay. There's always like a, there's always a turnaround where you can just change what you hate and turn it into something really good. Wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, as long as you know that you have that control, you can be so powerful. I feel yeah. like sometimes I forget that like, I'm the main character and <laughs> that I, I can take care of myself. I think I, it's important to remind yourself that, that you are the main character in your story and if you let that go to someone else, then you're just going to keep walking around every day confused. And I think that it's good that, yeah, you identify that with Allie. And I mean, hers was really rapid. (laughs) She, Oh my God. She was like, I don't really like my job. And then she Snapchatted us and she's like, I'm in state college. (laughs) You're already back. (laughs) Yeah. That was abrupt to say the least. Yeah. Um, but it can yeah, happen. If she, if she can do it, like I can do it, right? Yeah, 100, 100% Maybe. girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Check back with me in a year and we'll see what happened. I'm yeah. happy. <laughs> We're here for you. We're here for it. And I think that is such a powerful sentiment that like you can really change anything that you want to. And like something I will literally always remind myself because it's so easy to get like lost in the whole like nine to five, day to day, rat yeah. race for lack of a better word. I really don't like that word, to be honest. Rat rabbits. I hate it. I love little ratties. Oh my gosh. It like actually makes me cringe every time I say it. I don't know. I just don't want to know. I just don't know if we need to bring rodents into it, but regardless. (laughs) Do you have anything else that you want to share with us or any other feelings that you have about post-grad going into postgrad, graduating soon, pandemic, who Jade is as a person, anything at all? I would like to kind of touch on the fact that I was a lot more worried and stressed out before the election results. Mm -hmm. I think after, (laughs) after the election results, there was this like mystery weight lifted off my shoulders that I didn't realize I was carrying. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I can be alone in a random part of the world with my job. Wow. And like feel okay. Because wow. another thing was like, can I be alone as a woman in this country starting off a job and like working with people yeah. that are scary to me? I don't know. I don't know. It's also like, how much did that really impact what my future will look like but it just makes me feel more safe realistically no I mean that makes a lot of sense I do think now it feels like our field and what we study and what we believe in is finally being understood (laughs) no exactly exactly that was the other thing like my my career path I want it to focus on like sustainability and environmental factors that relate to the food system and I felt like no one gave a shit until now like if if people higher up in the government believe in climate change and food accessibility for everyone and like the issue with food deserts in urban areas then I feel like what I'm doing is like more worth it and I have like that backbone support system like higher up Mm -hmm. that will like make what I'm doing seem like it has more of a purpose yeah it's just like the precedent of it yeah right 
because you start to question like is no one going to care about this in a few years if the if the administration stays the way it is is he no, going to brainwash yeah. everyone into thinking yeah. climate change isn't real no exactly i remember when four years ago when the election was happening then and we found out the results i just remember thinking I wasn't going to have a job when I graduated yeah. and the fact that that was in the hands of like an election yeah was so frustrating so I feel like you it, it's validating I mean I mean it's a hundred percent that you can feel the way you feel I know that right. it it really stressed me out and I can imagine if it happened again during this time with corona it would have been even more anxiety ridden right. and defeating yeah when I found out the election results for 2016 I was in my environmental my AP environmental science class with Kristen Rildine and I remember her (laughs) just like sobbing at the front of the classroom and like we can do it if you you guys have the power to change and oh my god oh my god love her so much and I want to find her and talk to her but I just remember just that find <laughs> that moment where she as an environmentalist and like a woman who's educated on like agriculture I remember when she was nervous that was like oh fuck like we're screwed and we yeah. really need to do something about this so four years later while Trump has been president through my entire college career and then the last final step of like, I'm going to graduate. Oh my God. Oh my God. No one like we're doomed. And then Biden was elected. I was like, Oh, finally, like Ooh, a breath. take a deep breath. Everything's going to be fine. Kristen is probably <laughs> so happy. <laughs> so Yeah. So it just feels like a sigh of relief. And I also, part of me is like, Thank God, because all of those Trumpies that tried to shoot us down, they got they got pushed right out. Like we won. That also <laughs> makes me a little small. Like the small victories like that, keeping me alive. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big victory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. But it definitely. I mean, it feels really. It feels really good when you can when you feel like somebody that's supposed to represent it just feels really good when somebody in power represents similar values to you, exactly. but it's also willing to communicate those values in a way that doesn't create shame for other people. And that is trying to unify and that is trying to say, listen, if you didn't vote for me, I'm here for you still. And these are my values and we're going to figure it out. Like that to me is really powerful because those values are like, as an environmentalist, as a woman, those are values that I have. And I think it's really great to have somebody in that position be like, yeah, let's do it. I value you, even right. though you didn't vote for me, because I value people. Exactly. Yeah, I like, I feel like I, not to like, get too political, but we've already, we've, we've done it already. But I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can relate to the current, well, the future. It's not, it's not yet. It's not yet. Don't get, don't get our hopes up. But I feel like I can relate to the future administration, like, so much and that will definitely like motivate me as a person to like be more successful in my field yeah yeah especially just seeing yeah people that you feel like are representative of what you need what you want and we're trying to create jobs in like climate change and environmental justice and social sustainability like Mm -hmm. it feels like a breath a breath of relief and fresh air and yeah what, what we needed (laughs) um Tess on the I'm guessing it was Tess that wrote this question just from prior knowledge about you girl you asked what my sign was yeah well you know the thing that's interesting Jade is I (laughs) you're a Libra and I feel like I have I know a handful of Libras and I just I don't see you as a Libra I don't I've been told that my entire life but I don't know what a Libra really is do you like can you educate me yeah so I actually have it pulled up (laughs) (laughs) oh I cackled you got me to cackle on the podcast (laughs) and and 
So we, so all viewers and listeners don't come at my asshole. I am on astro astrology.com. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. This is we actually, will, we will cite her sources in the <laughs> description. Yeah, this is a real site. I'm not just a witch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, I feel like, so your color, what do you think your color is? You ever hear of like how people identify with colors? Like a color that represents my personality? Yeah. Lime green. Green is one of your colors. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Ooh. I didn't actually know that, by the way. For the listeners, I didn't look up the, the colors ahead of time. I just wasn't <laughs> the <ever> lime green. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, ha- do you know your lucky number? Do I have a lucky number? Yeah. It's four. Oh my God. Four is on here. No. <laughs> Me. I'm not like I can literally zoom in. Four. Do you see Shut it? Shut up. Lucky number. My lucky number has been four for like my whole life. Oh my gosh, you are a witch, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so, keep going. Keep going. So the reason why, and, and I don't want you to take offense to this, Jade. I just okay. feel like I know who you are at a deeper yeah. level. That sometimes oh, be it, candid. It confuses me. Um. Probably okay. So anyway, let me just stay on task. So, so your strengths, your strengths are that you are cooperative, diplomatic, gracious, fair-minded, and social. So I feel like I see like half of those. Yeah. But like the other half, like gracious. No, my middle name is not Grace, and I get that. That's what, what my dad. That's what my dad says about my mom. Her middle name is not Grace because she's like clumsy. I feel like I can relate to my mom in that sense. <laughs> and your weaknesses are that you're indecisive, avoid confrontation, carries grudges, and self-pity. I think the only one I can resonate with that is that I sometimes carry a grudge, but I ain't afraid to talk to a bitch if they <laughs> out of line. No, I, that's why I'll, I'm I'll confront anyone. Yeah, like there are so many things that, and then you, and okay, so then it says that you enjoy harmony, gentleness, sharing, and the outdoors. You dislike violence, injustice, loud mouths, and conformity. Okay, first of all, who likes violence? (laughs) 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 Oh, like some of them, I am like, I. Why would you? I do dislike (laughs) conformity. I understand that one. What was the what was the third word that I dislike? The other one was loud mouth. So like not to be rude to you, but I do think you No, you I are- have a loud mouth. <laughs> and no, I'm the loudest person I know. Sometimes I leave a social event and I was like, I was screaming the whole time. Like why was I like why was I like that? I like I'm like, oh my god. Like hurts afterwards. Maybe You're like, I got self- maybe the self-pity thing I can relate to because I'm like, why am I so annoying? Like people hate me. The other day, oh my god such gossip the other day I was working on the rooftop with other interns and an intern I have met once before she just randomly goes you're annoying and I was like (laughs) oh I know (laughs) oh my god you said holds up the mirror because I know it girl (laughs) you you preaching to the choir sis But at the same time, I, I was like, I love her for saying that. I love a loud mouth. Speak your truth, sis. Tell me I'm so annoying. And then I'll give you a kiss after. Okay. So no, you said, thank you. Thank you like, so oh, much. Sir, that's an honor. Say it again. Tell me what else is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely, there are a lot of things about a Libra that I can't really relate to. But the yeah, I feel the green. It's so oh, yeah. interesting to me. What are the other just, colors? The other color was pink. It's just pink and green. So you had that like spot on, which is really I, interesting. I mean, I I think green, not to like these like, ooh, conspiracy, but I think my name kind of oh. gave me that personality. That's so like, interesting. Do you think your name has like an impact on who you are? For sure, a hundred percent. Ooh. I think I, I think I am a like jade, like you just like turn into a jade plant, like those TikToks, <laughs> or like a little jade gemstone. But like everything jade is like green. Like I have a jade ring on right now. Like I really resonate with that color. That's so interesting. I agree, though. I think you're such a jade. 
Yeah. Huh. Although I was not named after like the gemstone or the plant, I was named after Mick Jagger's daughter, Jade Jagger. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Wait, yeah. If you got for the people in the back, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying like, although I resonate with like Jade, like the plant and the gemstone and like the green, it's not what I'm named after. I'm named after Mick Jagger's daughter, whose name is Jade Jagger. <laughs> Is there a reason why your parents liked Mick Jagger so much? My dad has, like, been into music since he was in, like, middle school and high school. He's always been, like, lead singer of bands, and he just, like, res- Yeah, he's, like, cool. My dad's pretty cool. See, um, sometimes they forget that people, like, can have, like, a regular job, but then also, like, do stuff yeah. like that on the side. Yeah, like, when I was born, he was, like, the lead singer of a band, that is still like active today and sometimes they're like celebrity guest and like <laughs> that'll like show up and like sing a few songs. Like, I feel like Whitney and I are gonna be doing like let's talk until we're in like a nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk um, nursing let's home talk. nursing <laughs> home let's talk post career podcast <laughs> post life podcast <laughs> let's talk from the grave <laughs> um, <laughs> no but my dad is like really into music so that has also kind of influenced my artistic side he's like super artsy and his career is in like product development but in like simpler terms like he builds toys and comes up with ideas for toys so I think that Santa. yeah exactly that like really influenced me as a human being because I was like constantly surrounded by his creative mind and he's like, kids, come, come try out this prototype and see if like other kids your age are going to like it. Oh my gosh. Like, oh. You're the test subject. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Huh. Wow. <clears throat> Jane, is there anything else you want to share with us? Not really. I mean, one of the questions that you asked was like advice. For- yeah people graduating in the next year or so and bringing it right back to my two words everyone just needs to be more patient with themselves easier on themselves and realize that it's not the end of the world it may feel like it but in like the post-grad life everything works itself out I fully believe that everything happens for a reason and in the end everything sorts itself out Wow. Yeah. Honestly, I needed that. I'm sure other people needed that. Thank you so much, Jade. Yeah, this is really fun. Thanks for having me. Thanks for <laughs> being interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being Jade, man. We really appreciate who Aww, you are. Thanks, kids. I love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Fuck. Postcard is just fuck, you know?